Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler video, and today we're going to be talking about volumetric 3D rendering, something I've been somewhat interested in for quite a long time now. Actually, I've always been kind of fascinated with varying methods for projecting three dimensions, with ray tracing being one of the earliest methods used in computing, but ultimately the fastest and most optimal way of rendering 3D in real time turned out to be polygons or more specifically, meshes formed out of triangles. But one of the key problems with a mesh of triangles is that it doesn't define a volume. In volumetric 3D, you're explicitly defining what amount of space is being consumed and are rendering an object based on that. Now, there's a couple ways to go about defining such a space, and we'll be touching on both over the course of the video, but the one I want to talk about first is equation-based volumetrics, the idea of defining a volume based on one or more mathematical equations or scripts. And what you're looking at right now is a quick basic program I wrote way back in 2008 to explore just that. When it comes down to it, this program is incredibly simple. You just select one of several objects to render, and the rendering process itself is... Yeah, it's as basic as it looks. But what this is actually doing is iterating through a cube of 100 x, y, and z coordinates, converting those triplets into x, y screen coordinates, and then passing that on to whatever particular set of equations I want to render from, which then check the x, y, z triplet against a series of steps and decides whether or not to fill in the appropriate pixel on screen. Then it just repeats until all 1 million x, y, z coordinates are processed. Now, this program can actually run quite a bit faster than this, but I wanted to keep the speed down so that the rendering process would be more interesting. Now, this one here is a set of four hollow spheres, the outer three of which have been cut in half along different axes, all of which are rendering in a different color. And the funny thing about rendering a sphere is that it's actually incredibly simple, as you just extend the Pythagorean theorem from two dimensions to three dimensions, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. From here, I wanted to make something a bit more complex, so I took some inspiration from a set of poker chips I had, and still have actually, where the edges had these sort of notches of color going on in pairs. But instead of making a poker chip, I made a set of three rings aligned on the x, y, and z axes. Now, getting the colored notches was a little tricky, involving the use of arc tangents, but ultimately came out pretty well. The next thing I did was produce a sort of 3D scene. My goal was to put three objects into the same space. In one corner is an hourglass-shaped tower made up of five rectangles of varying sizes. In another corner is a hollow sphere that has a quarter chunk taken out of it, while the other two corners together hold a half pipe with a couple of overhangs over top of it. The floor is also customized slightly to divide the active color by two for everywhere but the outer edges. At this point, I was fairly curious about adding volumetric effects, so I put randomized snow into the scene. Now, this is simply a random check on every dot rendered with a 1 in a thousand chance of trickery. Though, just for fun and for the sake of this video, I wanted to also show some variance here if I were to start off with less dense snow than make it really dense. And as you can see, it becomes increasingly difficult to see the stuff furthest from the edges until it all becomes nearly invisible. The last thing I originally put into this program was an approximation of a Terrace game board, and Terrace being a board game popularized by Star Trek The Next Generation back in the early 90s. I have played it before, it kind of plays like checkers, though I don't own a copy myself. Either way, the board itself has a neat 3D design to it, and it's one of the things that I like to replicate in 3D to learn what I'm doing with various pieces of software. Now, so far, we've just been exploring this old program of mine, but now it's time to check out something which serves a similar purpose, but is far more advanced. Eval Draw, which is yet another program written by Ken Silverman, creator of the Build Engine. If it seems like Ken's stuff pops up on the show more often than it should, I want you all to remember that Ken's interests in computer graphics are very similar to my own. The only difference being, he's magnitudes more educated and experienced on the topic than I am. That's why he's the one who's able to write all of these engines and programs and everything. But yeah, ValDraw is essentially a programming environment with its own proprietary language similar to C, but is designed specifically for rapid and instantaneous prototyping. At its most basic level, all it does is evaluate the code you write and draw the results into the window, hence the name EvalDraw. And as you can see, as I mess around with the startup code here, it takes very little to create all manners of curious graphical results. But that's only a taste of what the program can do, as the feature we're particularly interested in right now are voxels. There's a bit of confusion online as to what voxels are, but the word itself is basically just a combination of the words volumetric and pixel, 
with a voxel object essentially being a 3D bitmap made out of a rasterized cube of pixels as opposed to a rasterized plane of pixels, which is what a typical 2D bitmap or sprite would be. The voxels themselves can be rendered in a variety of ways on modern hardware, but the most common method you see nowadays, due to it being the most efficient, is to just convert a voxel into a triangle mesh. However, ValDraw is still able to build voxels out of volumetric equations, so quite a lot of what is on offer here hasn't been pre-built out of 3D bitmaps. So it's kind of like a mix of the best of both worlds, a volumetric 3D. Equations to define an object, which is then converted into a cube of voxels, which is then converted again into a triangle mesh for the graphics card to render. And one of the benefits to this approach is not only being able to view these voxels from any angle you want, but also being able to adjust their resolution. Higher resolution can make these objects look incredibly round and smooth, while lower resolutions are much faster to render and can even have a time value applied, resulting in animated voxels. For instance, with this pipe here, by adding in a time factor to the size of the inner sphere and changing its color to red, we essentially have a ball of red matter building up in the pipes. Also, because this particular voxel has randomization added to the colors, that's why the colors are flickering. Before I go on, I do want to point out a couple things. The first is that Eval Draw comes with a ton of examples, some of which were written by Ken himself, but a large chunk of them were actually written by a Robert Rogers, who also created a custom compiler which was more improved over what Ken originally wrote, and is thus used by default when you run the program. Now, some of these examples are pretty fun, like this one involving magnetism, or this one which actually really helped me understand what I was doing wrong with my early attempts at ray casting. I'm sorry. That is horribly wrong. Your monitor is not a frickin' parabolic dish. So, you have written a Wolfenstein 3D clone. Congratulations. Now, which image below best describes your raycasting method? I'm sorry. That is incorrect. The pixels of your monitor are not wider at the sides. You may have also noticed Microsoft Narrator is used to generate a lot of the vocals, such as in this very basic shooting game where the enemies say some extremely ridiculous things when you kill them. I like this floor texture. There he is. I forgot to drink my milk today and am now undergoing osteoporosis. There he is. Your rocket was delicious. I must chase you. And then there's the, this. Chew. Chew. Now where did that cow go? I must find her. There she is. The end. Yeah. The other thing I really need to note about Eval Draw, though, is that it was originally built for Windows XP, so it has severe flickering problems on modern Windows due to conflicts with desktop compositing. So to eliminate the flicker, you need to use a program like DXWind, link it in, make sure to take as little control over the program as possible, but ensure that you turn the clipper feature on, so that it forces the program to play nice with desktop compositing. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, there's one final challenge I want to tackle, converting some of my old volumetric stuff into the EvalDraw language. Now given that what I was doing in my program is very similar to how EvalDraw works, it shouldn't be too hard, right? Well, famous last words, because there's two immediate problems. The first being that EvalDraw treats the default voxel rendering space as negative one to one, with zero being dead center whereas my program treats it as 0 to 100, with 50 being dead center. On top of that, for some peculiar reason, I wrote the code to use the non-center adjusted coordinates to determine cutoff points. I have no idea why my younger self decided to do it that way, so that's just something I'm gonna need to compensate for too. Now, the way Eval Draw determines what to render in voxel mode is actually pretty simple. For every point in the voxel, it'll iterate your code, providing the XYZ triplet of the coordinate to be rendered, along with return values for an RGB triplet to determine color. It's also checking a variable called C, 
If the C variable is greater than zero by the time the code finishes executing, the active point is rendered, whereas if it's less than or equal to zero, it's not rendered. Beyond this, you can write your code however you want. So the simple solution to converting my old code over is to convert the input values into what my original code would have expected and then go from there. One thing I ran into pretty quickly though is that the Y and Z values are swapped compared to how it is in my program. Which isn't surprising really, as I made my program before I was up to spec on the standardization of which axes were which. Now taking that into account, and also taking into account the shifting of the XYZ coordinates to make zero the center in all checks, I was able to convert over my quad sphere thing pretty simply. It actually looks quite a bit different here due to differences in rendering, but more curious is that because of how thin I made the spheres, it actually screws with the lighting engine in a Val draw if I set the resolution of the resulting voxel object too low. Not to mention it can also start missing voxels in that case, but so long as I keep the resolution maxed out, it still looks pretty good. Also keep in mind that a Val draw is rendering using a proper perspective, whereas my program was doing isometric rendering, so that does kind of change the look of everything too. Next, I wanted to tackle the triple ring thing I made. Now converting this one over again wasn't too tricky, despite using more advanced math calls for arctangents and absolute values, because those commands in C work the exact same way as in basic, and thus I didn't expect them to work any differently here in a Val draw either, nor do they. So this one actually went fairly quickly, although I immediately noticed that the rings didn't feel as thick here as they do in my program, again a result of the way the perspective was working, but also likely a result of the thickness of the pixels in my program. I tried to compensate for it a bit, but ultimately I just left it looking eh, pretty thin. Lastly, I assembled the scene with the various objects. Now, this took a lot more code because of a lot more pieces to it, but the conversion was otherwise not complicated at all. It just took some time. I was even able to add in the snow. And with that, I'm pretty much done talking about volumetric 3D rendering, at least for now. And I still find the idea of rendering things out of defined volumes very neat, although realistically, there's little practical use for such techniques anymore, but outside of 3D modeling. So you generally don't see features for this sort of thing in anything other than 3D modeling software, as well as a few 3D graphing calculators. In any case, if you want to explore some of this stuff yourself, I've put together a zip file which has my voltest.bass file loaded into it, along with the files I created here in a Val draw. Plus, you can find a link in the video description to the page on Ken Silverman's website where you can grab a copy of a Val draw for yourself. So, that'll be all for this filler video. Next episode of Ancient DOS Games, episode 264, will be on Saturday, March 7th, and we're going to be taking a look at a real time strategy game steeped in high fantasy though it's not the one you may immediately be thinking of, so be sure to stay tuned to see what I've got in store. Thanks for watching, everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small random set of you guys.